Hi, this is JP Morgan. Today on The Sun and Lens, we're down here at Lackman installation of Urban Lights. We're gonna take a look at the 11 to 20 millimeter lens from Tamron. That's a 17 to 30 equivalent. That's that wide lens for the Trinity for an APS-C sensor, 11 to 20. So we're gonna take a look at that and shoot and just see how it resolves, what the images look like. We're just gonna play around and get some nice images here. So let's get started and see what we can do. This is a wonderful lens to shoot with because that 17 millimeters gives you that wide perspective which allows you to get that force perspective. These can be really close and in focus and then deep. Uh, it focuses to about 5.9 inches which gets you very close like a one to four macro uh, capability. So it gets you super close to your subject matter and allows you to get that force perspective. I absolutely love it. So I'm gonna shoot some more of those. The reason you want to buy an APS-C lens for an APS-C camera is they resolve on the sensor correctly. It is a bit sharper, it's going to be clear. They are just made to resolve on the sensor. You're not cutting the center out of something else. Some people may say, well, that should be sharper, but it does not resolve as well. An APS-C uh, lens is made to do that. And you can see it in these images. They are sharp uh, edge to edge, and that's why it's so important to buy a lens that matches the camera. So the reason this is the goal of all zoom lenses to get to a 2.8 is because it just gives you the ability to control the depth of field, things can fall out of focus, it just gives you a lot more control. It's a faster aperture which allows you to shoot in lower light situations, this really is the ideal kind of setup. Obviously when you have a 2.8 it gives you nice bokeh and that's one of the reasons in zoom lenses that that's the desired, just speed of the lens and great bokeh. I keep changing the autofocus up closer, further away, and it's responding very quickly. I mean, it jumps very quickly. It's a wide lens, so it should. And it certainly is. It works very well with the uh, Sony a6600. It's communicating completely with the uh, camera, focusing very quickly. So I think the autofocus is working great. I just, I want to reiterate how much I appreciate this series of lenses. They're all in this very small, compact uh, lens housing. They have a 67 millimeter which makes them all share the same filter sizes, but they're just super compact, super lightweight. Look at that on the A6600. It just makes perfect sense. That's the equivalent of a 17 to 30 millimeter lens, which makes this a great walk around kind of shooting uh, lens if you're gonna do architecture, if you wanna just be walking downtown, looking at buildings. It's a great setup, it really is. I just love how lightweight these are. This is the Peterson Automotive Museum. It's just been redone the last couple, a oh, few years. Beautiful lines. Be able to work with that force perspective. Love the wide angle, being able to get up 17 millimeters, be able to show that force perspective. Just a lot of fun. Man, this lens, the, the autofocus is working really well. I did go to manual focus for some of these, uh, so I can just find exactly where I want it to focus on the building. Uh, but it's been working excellent, so it's a lot of fun. Love doing this. So the XLD glass or XD glass in this lens is really made to, it's molded so you'd get less chromatic aberration. It just gives you a cleaner image. So the B-Bar 2 coating on the elements inside this lens, they kind of keep it from flaring or ghosting inside the internally in the lens. It gives you a better contrast, just gives you a sharper image. The lens also has a fluorine coating on the front of it. It's kind of like fluoride for your teeth. It gives you a little extra protection, but it's fluorine for a lens. So all these lenses, this entire series is made with, uh, they're moisture resistant. It makes so you can take them out and use them outside.
So I think if you're using an APS-C sensor, this is the lens series you should get yourself into because it's affordable, it gives you great quality, the images are sharp, and it really is, resolves for an APS-C sensor, and that makes a big difference because it's going to be sharper and it's going to look better on that APS-C sensor. All right, so this has been a lot of fun. Hope you enjoyed it. Leave, leave us a couple of comments. Love to hear from you. Keep those cameras rolling. Keep on clicking. This is my Hasselblad film kit in my SKB 2011 case. Hasselblad 500cm with an 80mm lens and a prism. 500ELM with a 120mm lens. Two spare camera backs. 40mm lens. Air bulb shutter release. Siconic 358 light meter. Lens and body caps. Polaroid back. Another Polaroid back. Lens shade for the 500cm. Battery cover for the LM. 5 pack of Portra 400, 5 pack of Portra 160, 5 pack of Fuji Color 400H, 5 pack of Triax 400, 3 rolls of 120 film, off we go. So that's my Hasselblad equipment that I carry in that SKV 2011 case. Film doesn't fence you in, it opens up great creative horizons. Let's go shoot some film.